Hello friends, I'm Sriman. In this video, I'll be explaining one question that is right behind on the whiteboard. And I'm going to take two approaches. One is from the approach of work, energy and power. And number two is true dynamics. And these two approaches will give you better flexibility for more mechanical physics questions that you face during exams, okay? So let's analyze the question that's right behind me. A trolley of mass 15 kg, so label as you go, right? This is M. It's pulled by a rope along the slope, da 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 da. Angle, we label it as theta. Constant resistive force of 50 newtons, we label it as, with a small letter f, x on the trolley, the net force acting on it is 120 newtons. We'll call it f net, okay? What is the efficiency? Efficiency, we'll just call it efficiency of energy transfer. This is an accelerating system, am I right? So there's even kinematics that can apply to this question. Alright, so the first method is work energy power. Let's analyze and revise some of the concepts that you learned under work energy and power. Work done is force times the displacement. But people forget one important thing, which is that the displacement in direction of the force. Okay? So for example, if your displacement is in one direction and the force is in some other direction, you will have to resolve the vector to get the component that is parallel to the direction of the force. Alright? Same applies to power. Power is what? Rate of work done. So it's dW over dt. Some simple differentiation. Assuming it's a constant force. In the case of the MCQ question, it will be force dS over dt, which is force times velocity. Now the question asks something about efficiency. In, when you're looking at work energy power, efficiency, EFF, you'll call it useful power, right? Is how much useful power you're able to get from the total power that you have input into the system and it times 100%, correct? An important question you should ask yourself is very simple. We had friction. Does friction make up useful power? No, because producing resistive forces and leads to power loss. In this question, there are two useful powers that we need to take note. Number one is increase in Ke over time. And why is there an increase in K? Because this is an accelerating system. How do you know it's an accelerating system? There was something called F net. There's a net force. So, by the second law, the system is accelerating. Number two, increase in GPE, gravitational potential energy, over time. Correct? Because there is an increase in height of the object relative to the ground. So, let me tell you a very interesting approach to find the formulas for these two things. There will be a bit of kinematics taking part in this video, so it will be a really good revision of the concept. First, let's deal with increase in GPE over time. So we will call it dGPE over dt. Now guys, I want you to think, what is the formula for gravitational potential energy? Think. Very simple, right? GPE is mgh. Now, dGP over dt is basically you differentiating this with respect to time. m is constant with time, g is constant with time, so it's just mg dH over dt, which is equals to mgv. Yes, you feel that that's right, but there's something missing. What did I tell you at the start? The displacement is in the direction of the force in the case of work done. If you're looking at power or the rate of change or gravitational potential energy, the velocity and the weight have to be in the same direction, but it's not. So if you want to look at the slope, and this is what is occurring, right? This thing is being pulled by F net force. The mg right here is going downwards. The velocity is going this direction. In a previous video on dynamics where I covered free body diagrams, I told you that a component of mg that is parallel to the slope is called in terms of theta, what is it? mg sine theta. And now you'll get this component, correct? So, so now that these are in like the parallel directions, the correct formula is mg sine theta v. This is a very good derivation. Please remember this. Now let's apply the same thing to kinetic energy, okay? Kinetic energy, what formula do you study? Half mv squared. Now, this is going to be really interesting because kinematics is going to come. You're like wondering how, right? So, change in kinetic energy. What is the change in kinetic energy? Final minus initial. So, it's half mv squared minus half m 
u square. In the case u being the initial speed, v being the final speed, not the velocity. Now, half, if you factorize this, you'll get v squared minus u squared, correct? Where do you study v squared minus u squared? Doesn't this formula here sound really familiar? v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, correct? It's in kinematics. And in this case, this is an accelerating system question. Constant acceleration in a straight line. Am I right? So this formula can apply. You can substitute this in and you'll get half m 2as, which is equals to mas, which ma is fs. Correct? Now, if you differentiate dke over dt, you'll get what? The change in kinetic energy over time, you'll just get f ds over dt, which is equals to fv. Correct? But what is this f right here? Is it the total force or the net force? It is the net force, guys. It's the net force, not the total force. Because the net force is the thing that causes the box to accelerate. The total force doesn't because you are ignoring the resistive force. So don't use F total, use F net V. Now coming back to the question, okay? Efficiency is useful power over total power. 100%, correct? So, you can substitute what we learned. For changing kinetic energy over time, it was F net V, correct? And then this, what are the useful power? The change in potential energy over time, which we call mg sine theta V. Now, that's it, right? Then the total power is the same thing, plus mg sine theta V, but one more thing. The friction, right? Friction leads to power loss, but it still accounts in total power. The power is conserved. So, it will be Fv. F is frictional force, V is velocity. It's just the power equation that we told at the start of the video. P is equals to Fv. Just substitute it. Now, you guys know F net, you guys know V, you know all this, this stuff. Your final answer, once you substitute everything, you'll get 76% to two significant figures. Do you guys get this answer? Now, I'm going to highlight the dynamics point of view, which is very related to the previous video I did on free body diagrams. So this will be a good revision of what we covered in the previous video. So we're going to look from a dynamics point of view, which is method number two. Now, let's break down efficiency a bit more. Not only can it be classified as useful power output over total power input, you can break it down as useful work done divided by the total work done times 100%. Now, what is useful work done? Let us break it down further. It is equal to total work done minus the work that is lost due to friction, correct? So, we just replaced it. Okay, let's put it back. And, yeah, I just filled it times 100%. Now, this is math, right? If we divide this by this, you get 1 minus work done lost over total work done. Okay, what is work done lost? You learned that at the start of the video, work is equal to force times displacement, correct? So for the same thing, work lost is F, which is friction, times the displacement that the object covers along the slope. Along the slope. What is the total work done? F, S. And what does this F stand for? Let's cancel this out. It should give me 1 minus F over F. Let's analyze what this F stands for. This is related to the previous video that I highlighted on free body diagrams. What did I say? First, define the system, right? We'll define the system as the box. So if you look at a free body diagram, you have the driving force F, which is the one we need to find. We also have mg, normal contact force, and friction. Quite complicated, right? So let's analyze this. So let's resolve the forces. Let's equate it to mA. F, correct, this is the force, it's going upwards, it's accelerating upwards, F minus frictional force, which is going the opposite direction, minus mg sine theta. We take the parallel component which opposes the motion. And this is equals to ma. And this entire thing right here is your F net, correct? So how do you get F? F is equals to MA. What is this MA? MA is just equals to F net. So it's F net plus F plus mg sine theta. 
F net in this case is 120 newtons plus frictional force 50 newtons plus mg sine theta. You just fill in mg sine theta, you get the F. Now you get the F, guys, you just substitute this in. You have a frictional force, which is 50 newtons, and you'll get the same answer, which is 76%. Once you times 100% right here. Why this question is really good is that it shows that all the mechanical physics chapters, like kinematics, dynamics, forces, and work energy power, are linked to each other, and they can be interchanged for different types of questions. So you have to understand that if you want to do well for physics, you can use multiple methods for the same question, right? Thank you guys for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. So I feel motivated to make much more helpful videos and content for you guys. Please share this with your friends. Follow me on Instagram at streamen.24 and I'll see you in the next video.